name is Gabe and welcome to the channel. For the first project on Time to Tinker, we are going to be restoring my 1927 Ford Model T. This car began its life in 1927 as a Model T Touring Sedan and was last registered on the road in 1949. Since then, it has been primarily sitting outside. The previous owner said it sat outside at his ranch for the past 15 years. Before that, it sat outside in the woods with an old tarp thrown over it. Despite being out in the elements for so many years, the car is in amazing condition, and I would even call it a barn find condition, although I don't think the car has been in a barn for the past 50 years. So for this introductory video, let's take a look at the car as it currently sits. Here we have a few interesting things that came with the car. First we have the original title. The title is dated as having transferred from the first to the second owner in 1934. We also have the original ignition key that came with the car, and I thought this one was really amazing. It's stamped forward along the top of the key. Starting at the front of the car, there's one interesting observation. The headlights are original. The headlight bulbs are not cracked anywhere, they're not damaged, which I found to be really amazing for a 93 year old car. They're still stamped forward right at the top in the glass here, and I think that is really cool. Here we are at the wheels of the car. Nearly every single Model T ever produced had wooden wheels. The last two years of production, 1926 and 7, the years this was made, they offered wire-spoked wheels as well, although this car didn't have them. The wheels feel to be in great shape. The spokes are really tight. They don't move around at all, so I think they can be saved. The previous owner had it sitting up on blocks, as I do. Even though it was outside, he had it on blocks. So the wheels weren't sitting in the mud, and I think that saved them to a great extent because they don't seem to be disproportionate on any side. They're not rotten at the base or anything. They're really tight and strong. So I think we can save them. I'm just going to give them a light cleanup and, and check for sure, but I think they'll be okay. Also, all the wheels feel really tight bearing-wise as well. They spin freely. There's no bearing issues in them. So I think we're off to a good start there. Perhaps the most unique part about the character of this car is the bullet holes in the middle of the windshield. Now I would like to think these occurred when gangsters were using the car to rob a bank in the 30s and they narrowly escaped getting shot with the bullet holes coming in between the passenger and driver seats. But that's probably not the case. The bullet holes likely occurred when the car was sitting out in the woods and some kids shot it with a pellet gun. The holes enter from the back side of the windshield with a small divot. They're clearly made by a low caliber rifle like a BB or pellet gun. The windshield is flat plate glass, so it'll be really easy to fix when we do have to do it. It is also broken in the upper corner as well as several other cracks. Here we are at the front seat of the Model T. There are a few interesting things. First, this car has an aftermarket speedometer. Speedometers were not standard on Model T's. You could not get them from the factory. They had to be put on after the fact. So someone installed this speedometer on the car. It currently shows 12,500 miles. I have no idea when it was put on or when it quit working because the cable is broken on it. So the mi mileage is significantly more than that. Um, the next interesting thing is the ignition switch in the middle. There is a key slot in it to push your key in and you turn that switch to the right or left depending on whether you want to run the car on the battery or the magneto and I'll explain what both of those do later but it's a very interesting thing completely unique to Model T's and then the little piece in the inside of the dash is a dash light that someone installed it's also aftermarket now on the steering wheel you have the throttle and spark control levers now this is also unique to old cars pre-1925 or so depending on, on what the setup was. But the, the lever on the right controls the throttle. So it doesn't have a gas pedal, it has the throttle lever on the steering wheel. So basically it's always in cruise control. And then the, thro the lever on the left side of the steering wheel is for your spark. It advances your spark timing. And I'll explain why that's important with Model T's later. Um, the floorboards, I have them. I have taken them out because they were really rotten and I didn't want to break them, so I took them out and put them on the shelf so that they wouldn't be ruined. Um, I think I can save two of them. Uh, the bottom ones were really rotten and they're just completely falling apart. So I'm going to have to rebuild some floorboards, but they're just wooden. It has wood boards across there that are supposed to cover up the transmission and provide a floorboard. Uh, you can see the transmission from there. It's a very unique transmission setup, a two-speed planetary gear transmission, very unique to the Model T, and it has three pedals. One is the brake, 
reverse pedal, and a forward pedal, and I'll explain how those work when we dig into the transmission. The seat frames are here, although they are very rusted along the bottom edges of them. So at the very least, it's going to take a lot of work rebuilding them if they can be saved. And that about wraps it up for the cab. Now if we take a look at the body, this car was a touring sedan when it came from the factory. It was supposed to have four doors and a rear seat. Sometime many years ago, a previous owner cut off the back part of the body. The story goes that it was during World War II and gas was being rationed and trucks got better gas rations than cars did. So they cut off the back part of the car and built a pickup bed on it so they could get better gas. Model, many Model T's were also just converted to trucks because people wanted trucks. So I don't really know, that's what the story goes. I have some of the wood that was on it. The wood was really rotten as well and can't be saved. But it came out about a foot beyond the rear fenders there. Had about a foot or a foot and a half tall sides on it. A little wooden pickup bed. I haven't decided if I'm going to rebuild a wooden pickup bed or if I'm going to find a second half to a touring body to put back on here. It wouldn't be really hard to put it back on because right where they cut it is right where the door jam is for the rear door. They didn't really have to cut anything except one tiny little spot on the bottom there. So it would be really easy to, to tack back in the, the rest of the body if I want to do that. I haven't decided yet. But I have a long way to go before that even becomes a problem. Let's take a look at the engine now. Here we are under the hood of the Model T where we see the mighty 22 horsepower engine. Yes, it's only 22 horsepower and yes, many riding lawnmowers have more horsepower than that. It still is an amazing engine. We'll get into more depth into this later, but for now, let's just say that there's no water pump, no oil pump, no fuel pump, so there are very few things to go wrong with this engine. What I am particularly amazed about is how good of condition it is in after having sat outside for so many years. The wiring is all there in remarkable condition and complete. The coil box is that metal box off to the side of the engine and the coil packs are in amazing condition as well. They're wooden boxes and they have little terminals on the top that vibrate. That's why they're called trembler coils. And they provide the spark to all the spark plugs and I'll, I'll explain all of that later and how amazing of a system that really is. But the coils are in amazing condition. The wood boxes are perfect and I was really impressed by that. I drained the oil from the engine and I was actually surprised to see how much oil was actually in it. Model T's are generally pretty leaky because the seal technology was not as great back then. So I'm really surprised to see this much oil come out of the engine. The oil is in great shape. It's obviously very old and thick and there's a lot of sludge at the bottom of the pan. But it's, it's, it's great. There's no water in it. There's no metal filings. So I think that's a great start as well. It lo looks like the engine is going to be in okay shape. Well, I think that just about wraps up our tour of the current condition of this car. For the next video, we're going to be taking apart the fenders and parts of the body so we can dig down to the frame and start the mechanical restoration from there. If you have any questions or comments or something you want to know about this car, or maybe your grandpa had one and you want to tell us a story, go ahead and leave those comments down in the section below. I'd love to be able to read them. If you want to stay notified about this project, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know next time I upload a video. Until next time, see you later.